Hey everyone, I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes, and today we're going to use this pile of hardwood and this epoxy from Moss Epoxy Company to create this amazing coffee table. This project started with a bunch of different thoughts, but my wife came up with this cool idea to make this table similar to an edge grain cutting board, but then pour epoxy into the center area. The wood that we chose was walnut, hickory, ash, and some hard maple. I got to milling everything up with the joiner, planer, and table saw. All of this lumber was rough sawn, so every face and edge of these boards had to be milled and squared up. Once we were done milling, it was Deanna's turn to put her skills to work and lay out all of this beautiful wood into a cool pattern. It had this cool skyline effect and we were excited to see what it would look like with the epoxy in the middle of it all. I left the boards really wide as I knew that I may need to flatten each wood segment after glue up and ultimately flatten the entire table after the epoxy pour. The glue up was pretty straightforward for the most part. Just treat it like an oversized cutting board. We did decide to glue up 5 board segments and set up the entire 15 board block. This just made it easier to handle and keep each segment flat and aligned. I chose to use dominoes to align each of the three segments. This would ensure that they were flat and parallel to each other. I laid out the tabletop and marked where I would want my dominoes to fall. I then got to work cutting all the mortises. Then it was back to the clamps again for the final glue up. I had to build a mold for the tabletop and chose to use 3 quarter inch melamine for my material. It is very affordable and easy to work with. I cut up all the mold pieces so that the overall size was about 1 quarter of an inch wider and longer than what I wanted the tabletop to be. I also made the sides an inch and a half taller than the thickness of the tabletop. I then used Alex Plus Fast Dry Caulk to seal all of the joints of the mold. Using my brad nailer, I tacked everything into place. For the finishing touch, I added caulk to all of the internal and external seams, just to be sure that there wouldn't be any leaks. I even water tested the mold for several hours, all good. I will spray the mold with mold release to help it from sticking to the epoxy. The next step was the messiest one. I wanted each wood segment to be perfectly flat. So I made this quick router sled rail set for my workbench. I was able to flatten each segment in about 10 minutes and I used the white side 6220 router bit for this. Now it's time to pour some epoxy. I chose to do this in the basement as it was way cleaner than my shop and the temperature was easier to manage and control. We started out by making sure that the mold was completely flat and level by using some simple pine shims to jack up the box wherever it needed it. We then set each wood segment into the mold, aligned it, and secured them in place with clamps. The Deep Pour X epoxy system from Moss is unique in that you can pour 3 inches thick in one sitting and its cure time is about 24 to 36 hours depending on the climate of your area. I mixed up 6 gallons or just about 23 liters of this epoxy. It has a 2 to 1 mix ratio and I calculated how much to mix by taking the total area of each wood segment and subtracting it from the total area of the mold at the same thickness of the wood. I then added a little extra just to be safe. To make it manageable, we mixed up two buckets with three gallons each. For the pigments, Deanna chose a smattering of colors in my powder pigment collection. We had done some tests prior to the main pour, so we had an idea of what we wanted. The trick here is to be slow and easy to reduce the amount of bubbles that you produce. To keep the patterns in your pigment, you will need to stir it every half an hour for several hours. Otherwise, the pigment settles and gets more blob-like instead of swirl-like. After everything was cured, we took the mold off and admired our work. The colors and swirls in the epoxy turned out fantastic.
Now it was time to flatten the tabletop itself. When the epoxy cures, it shrinks a little bit and pulls down. So we started by taking off the top layers until we got down to a single flat plane. Then I flipped the top and flattened the bottom the same way. I took about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Even Aaron got in there and helped out with the action. Next up was the sanding. I recently added the Surf Prep 6 inch ray sander to my collection and I'm sure glad I did with this project. Lots and lots of sanding to remove router marks and to bring that epoxy back to an amazing luster. I started at 80 grit and then went up to 100, 120, 150 and ultimately 180. You don't want to go too fine with the sanding as you want the final coat of epoxy to stick to the wood. After sanding the top and the bottom, I cut the ends and the sides off with my track saw and pole saw. I then sanded those as well. Now it's time for the Moss Tabletop Pro Pour Over Epoxy. You do this in two steps. First you pour on a flood coat just to seal up and secure the top, and then a thicker final coat. This epoxy self-levels and flattens out like glass. You want to be sure to torch out any bubbles in the first hours after pouring. Finally it was time to make the base. I had a bunch of leftover walnut from the sparrow table build and decided to use that. I milled everything up and chose a blocky squared off look for the base. I used my new tenoning jig and a dado stack to cut dados in all of the legs. These are kind of like a bridle joint but without cutting into the stretchers. I then marked up the cross stretcher and cut that as well. I had previously removed the dado stack and was too lazy to swap it back, so I did these the lazy way. Or was the dado stack the lazy way? I can never remember. Oh well. They're cut and they look great. I glued up everything on the base and set it aside so I could start sanding the top again. Off camera we added the final pour over coat of epoxy. Then it was back to the base to apply three coats of armor seal for the final finish. Well, it's done. Our first major epoxy project and it turned out absolutely amazing. The depth and color of the epoxy coupled with all of the tones of the woods is stunning. Everyone who sees this table falls in love with it and they make the comment on how it's more of a work of art instead of a piece of furniture. I don't know, to me it's beautiful in any category and we love it. In the end, that's all that really counts, right? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this table. I'd like to thank Moss Epoxies for sponsoring this video and for supplying all the epoxy that we used in this project. I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.